What's up everybody? Brian here, Carolina Bushwhacker. All right, I'm back in the shop. We're gonna pick right back up where we left off. I'm gonna show y'all how I alter a form to expand it to make it a little bit bigger. I ordered it undersized on purpose. I'd rather take it and expand it bigger than to have to try to shave it down and work it down. It's just simpler and easier to do it this way. All right, now I'm gonna show you how I do it. All right, let's just go over the tool list real quick. You're gonna need a saw to cut the form with. You're gonna need your expanding foam. You're gonna need a rasp, some sandpaper to work it down, get the form prepped and ready also after shaving anything extra that might've popped out. Maybe need a measuring tape. You know, here's something else that's super huge and important. Keep you a schedule that you can write down the dates and times that you do things so you can remember trying to remember it trust me first-hand experience you're gonna be like ah, i got it right now and then you forget another thing is take as many notes as you can that you can go back and look on like when you're measuring stuff ordering stuff something else that i did is i took the raccoon see and i got his information with the owner's information on an invoice and I go back and look at it, and then I can see the size that I measured him, the size that I ordered, and how much adjustment I need to make. Now, another thing that I like to do is take the eyes off of any critter that I got that I'm gonna mount, and I stick it, here's a couple of fish. I stick the eyes onto the forms until I go to do them so they don't get misplaced and lost or mixed up, and you put the wrong eye in the wrong form. Um, tags tags are very very important and these kind of tags little paper tags keep everything tagged and itemized all right let's get into cutting him and i'm going to explain as we go along through it all right guys so i've made a decision to where the original form line from when it was made goes right down the center i'm going to follow it and cut it there then I'm going to put three quarter inch board in here in a couple of different areas, which will expand that out three quarters of an inch here, but also another three quarters of an inch down there. So when you measure around, you've actually gained an inch and a half. I needed to go up an inch, but I'm going to just stretch it just a little bit more, but never go too much. Then for the length, I need to get a good inch and a half to two inches. So I'm gonna put three quarter inch board here, three quarter inch board here, which gained me an inch and a half in length. And when I get down here to the neck, I will test fit it again and make a decision to just how much more I need to bring that neck out. I can gain another half an inch there or to, up to an inch if needed. Now, when I get down to this section, I'm gonna do it like a V. It'll be like about an eighth of an inch here to three quarters of an inch here all the way through. The reason for that is if I expand this too much, then it's not gonna balance out and look kind of funny. I just wanna fatten up the body and a little length on it, not so much the neck or to keep it uh, balanced with the head. All right, well, I'm gonna start cutting it and getting it going. And I'm gonna to explain to y'all why I make the decisions I do on how much I need to go or not go here in just a second. All right, I'm gonna explain it to you real quick. I made a decision to go about a half an inch to an inch bigger than the original measurements when I took and measured him when I skinned him out. I don't go too much bigger and the reason for that is like, here's an example for you. Guys want their deer heads mounted on elk forms. You know, your, your deer was only so big. If you stretch it out too much, when it goes through the drying stage, it starts pulling away from the eyes, the nose, the lips. You need to have it a little loose. And as I heard it explained one time, and it's just 100% true, you can take like a cat or a dog, and when you grab them by the back of the neck, you can pick them up and they have all that loose skin on them. Well, when you mount something, you kind of need to have that looseness as well. If you stretch it out as much as you can, try to make it as big as you can, like I said, when it starts drying, it starts pulling and then there's issues. And then also you're gonna kind of 
deform the look. You know, your raccoon, just because I could stretch it out another four inches may not be a good idea because then it's starting to look like a Datsun dog instead of a raccoon. Y'all got the picture, let's move on. Okay, now I've taken them and cutting them for length. Now I'm gonna take each individual piece and cut them for width. And because they are curved and contoured, I'm not gonna use the hand saw that I just used. I'm gonna use the Sawzall. Much smaller profile blade and it'll turn and go through there a lot easier. All right, so I made a decision to mount it onto this board right here and then secure it to the picnic table. That way I can cut it, not holding it with my hand. All right, so now we're gonna take these little blocks and the hot glue gun and start spacing them in there. All right, guys, here we go. So, and I forgot to mention it. On this side, I needed to go a little bigger and keep it a little tighter on the tight side. So I kind of shaved it down a little bit. And then those blocks fit in there perfectly. And then the gap there in the middle is lined up. And like I said, I was gonna keep it with about an eighth right there at the neck. Same thing at the tail. Now I'm gonna start wrapping the tape around it and getting it sealed up and ready for the foam to get poured into a couple of little slots. Okay, so I took and I ran the tape around, sealing up all the bottom, up the sides, and left a couple of little spots where that's where I'm gonna pour it in to make sure it expands and gets in there real good. Let me explain something to you. Use a high adhesive tape for those of you that are not too positive about all that. I did construction for 32 years and I ran a business since 06, renovating and remodeling homes. This right here is a painter's tape. They come in blue, they come in green, you got cardboard colored looking one. Those are different strength adhesives. I learned from a floor guy years ago. You don't wanna put a high adhesive tape like on a polyurethane hardwood floor because you're going to take up the polyurethane especially if it's been freshly redone you want to use a softer adhesive tape which is like what this green is you don't want to mess with that it ain't gonna hardly stick to this get you something like duct tape this has fibers in it to help strengthen it it's a high adhesive tape now i'm gonna wrap it in saran wrap okay now i've got it all wrapped in the saran wrap shrink wrap whatever you want to call it and I left three ports up here, here, and here that I'm going to pour into. And after I pour into it, I'm going to slap over this piece of cardboard, take my stapler, and I've already checked, make sure I got staples in it. I don't want to be running around. No staples in it, panicking, and the stuff spewing out everywhere, which ain't no big deal. But I want to strap it down and lock it down so that way it forces that foam to go every direction I need it to go and not have a weak point for it to seep out of. All right, well, that's what I'm gonna do now. Okay, now I got equal parts and actually, honestly, I put a hair more into this one and I'm gonna pour it into this one because it's gonna leave just a little bit on the inside wall of the cup, that way it'll stay balanced. I'm gonna stir it up for about 25 seconds and then pour it in. Like I said, put the cardboard over it, staple it up, let it sit for about 30 minutes. All right, well, it's done, did its job. I'm gonna start unwrapping it. As you see, I put it in this box in case there was a mess to be made, it'd be made in this box I can dispose of. And you see when I popped off them cardboard pieces, how it kept it pressed down in there, making very little mess and less of the rasping I got to do, keeping it kind of shaped like I need it. All right, now as you can see, came out pretty good. I have to do a little bit of rasping. I did have a void, no big deal. Right there, where it didn't get all the way around that block, eh, no big deal. Fill it with clay, because I'm gonna use clay anyway. I'm going to rasp on it some, and then I'll take the clay and smooth it and get it all balanced out before mounting it. 
All right, guys, there you go. How to alter a raccoon form, small mammal form. You could do this with a fox. You could do it with a bobcat, coyote, so forth and so on for small mammals. Life size too. Um, I took some clay. I ran over it and smoothed out all those areas right there, filled in the void where it was missing a little bit. But I got it where I wanted it. I've got it extended a couple of inches. I got the girth circumference expanded a couple of inches. In the next video, we're going to test fit it, make sure I've done my job right, which I'm pretty sure will be okay. And then we're going to start the mounting process. So that'll all be in the next video. Let me tell you all this. There's a reason why I keep bringing the raccoons to y'all from soft tanning to now doing a full body mount. They're a great learning curve. There's a lot of forgiveness in them. They're big. They're thick and fluffy. They're abundant. You can get them from trapping them yourself or hunting or somebody else can donate them to you just like squirrels, which is another video I've done that's coming up after this one is a how to do a fox squirrel, full body mount, real good one. Y'all will like that one if you're liking this one. If you're liking this one, do me a big favor. Hit that like button. If you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel, Fall Back. There's plenty of videos to watch. There's plenty more videos to come. All right, well, up next is going to be the mounting. All right, guys, like always, thanks for watching.